Hi guys, I'm Darren and in this video we're going to be looking at the Meteor LED kit from Speedybee. So you may have been able to tell by the intro, this voiceover is being recorded afterwards. Basically, I didn't turn my microphone on when I recorded the original video, so due to time constraints, rather than re-record the whole thing, I'm just doing a voiceover. To be honest, I didn't actually think the voiceover was too bad on the first clip. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to do everything using the screens that I've recorded, so you won't be seeing much of me in this video. But yeah, as I mentioned in the intro, this is the Meteor LED kit from Speedybee. This is a kit designed for their B35 Cinewhoop and is basically an LED strip with a little controller. And it's the little controller that makes this thing very interesting. Not only can we have LEDs which we can change the sequencing on, we can change uh, what it does using the button and also using the SpeedyB app, but also we can use this little controller to update the flight controller using the SpeedyB app. So if you've got a flight controller that doesn't have that functionality, you can actually use this to do that. You can introduce it to the flight controller, but we'll have a look at that later on. So first of all, let's take a quick look at the product. Uh, on screen, you've seen the SpeedyB website. I'll put a link in the description for the product. Here you can see the default length is 78.5 centimeters. It sounds an odd number, but we'll see why later on. But this can be cut down at set intervals. So if you want it shorter, you can. But if you want it longer, you can actually unsolder the strip and solder on a different strip, so long as it doesn't exceed the power levels. So here you can see a quick image of the, uh, the button mounted inside the B35 frame. It actually comes with this 3D printed part and it's showing you here how you can turn the thing on and off and change the effects. So it's a nice neat package in that particular frame, but it will work with any sort of cine whoop, that sort of thing. Now, this is the interesting stuff. This is how we do the wiring. So if you want to use it just purely for LEDs, you'd connect the battery wire to the V terminal and the ground wire to the G terminal. Now this can accept, uh, I believe it was 2S to 6S. There is voltage uh, circuitry on the little board. So it will actually convert everything down to five volts for the LEDs themselves. This next frame is how you set it up to use the SpeedyB app on your flight controller. So we're basically connecting up a UART. We have TX to RX and RX to TX as shown in the image. And what you do is set the UART to MSP. If you're using iNav, UART1 is usually set to MSP by default. So that would make sense to use it on that port. Next up, we have another trick for this little uh, LED board. You can actually use the button as a boot button as well. If the flight controller has a pad on it that takes uh, a boot button option, you can connect the B on the little board to the boot button pad on the flight controller. Then you can use that as a remote boot button, which if a flight controller is installed somewhere deep in a model, this might give you a nice option to access that boot button. So here's a few of the specs. So we can see the input voltage of 7.4 volts to 25.2 volts. Again, that's 2S to 6S. And the output voltage is four to four and a half volts. So this is, this is good for five volt LED strips pretty much with a maximum current of two amps. So if you do want to connect your own LED strip, you will need to make sure that it doesn't exceed two amps. So they're the main limitations of this product. But anyway, let's take a look at it on the workbench. So this is how we receive our SpeedyB Meteor kit. It comes in a neat little package, which is just a small anti-static bag with a small bit of cardboard on the top, nice and simple. So if we look on the back, you'll notice that there's actually some QR codes on the packaging. There's one for the SpeedyB app, there's some social media stuff, and then there's also one for the manual. Now I'm making the point here that it might have been better to reverse the SpeedyB app and manual and the social media. So when you rip the packaging, it doesn't rip those QR codes for the more important parts. I know social media is important for um, companies, but the actual manual and link to the app is more important to the customers. So I think it might have been nice to reverse those, but there we go. 
Inside the packet, we get a little bit of paper which has another QR code with a download for the app and the manual. And also we have a link to the download page in a readable URL. And we also have contact information if we need support. So the information is inside the packet anyway. But let's get the rest of the stuff out and have a quick look. So first up, we have a bag of accessories, which is pretty nice. We get three cables, one of which is a slightly longer cable with no ends on it, which we can use to connect to UART. Then there are two cables for just connecting it with the power and the boot options. One of them is already on the board, which I'm pointing at now, and the other one would go on the flight controller end, so you can disconnect them if you want. It's a bit of a shame that they don't have a disconnecting pin version for the UART installation. You may want it so you can disconnect the UART nice and easily. So uh, I'm just pointing out where the pads are now for the UART. You can see the R and T, which is how you would connect up to that. Now let's take a look at the LED strip themselves. It's all wrapped up with a little cable tie and you can see it's a fairly long strip. And what we're gonna do is have a look at the markers. It's got 3M tape on the back and if you get stuff like this, don't worry about it. LED strips have a finite length. They will have joins in at certain places. So don't worry about it. It doesn't affect the use, but some, play, some LED strips may have joins in them. Now you can see the little black dots. These are where you need to cut the strip if you make it shorter. You can actually see it a bit better now I've zoomed in, but where the black marks are is where you need to cut. And you can quite clearly see in between each section, there are two LED chips. So if you cut it down, you'll basically shorten it by two LED chips. The actual length is 12.5 millimeters, which is why we have that 78.5 millimeters for the total length. But yeah, there we go. That is how you cut them down. So I thought I would put the strip inside the V35 frame so people can take a look. You can see it fits perfectly inside this frame and it will work for any Cine Whip or drone with a smaller outside diameter you can see the module fits in there very neatly and the little 3d printed uh, tpu cover just fits on to tie everything together neatly so let's take a look at the little module board you can see on there the red c3 chip is the chip that speedy be used to do their communication but also on the module is an esp32 so i'm guessing this is what's doing all the controls for the leds you can see the little button which you can use to turn it on and off, change the LEDs or um, use as a boot button. And also you can see there's a ground uh, V for volts, I'd imagine, and L for, who knows, it should be D for data, which is what you would change if you wanted to put a different LED strip on. So you'd solder up the ground to the G power, which will be five volts to the V and the data line would go to the L. And that would be how you put a different strip on if you chose. Right, so this is the first time using it. I've basically just connected up the UART to UART1, the power to nine volts for the VTX and the ground to ground. As I said, iNav should have MSP on UART1 by default. So let's see what works. So you can see plugging the battery in, the LED comes to life instantly with this nice little boot up sequence before it starts going into its actual display. Clicking the button changes the mode and you, you do get more control over it in the app. So it's worth using that if you want something nice, but I quite like that flame effect. You can see there's about eight different effects that you can have. And long press turns it off and a long press turns it back on again. So next up, let's take a look in the SpeedyB app. I've never actually used the SpeedyB app before. I usually just use a laptop to configure my uh, flight controllers at the flying field. So this will be something new. So let's do get started and click the plus and it instantly finds the Meteor. So what we can do is click connect. And then we get the option of cho choosing the LED strip or the flight controller. Now at this point, I get ahead of myself and try the flight controller first. I've got them too close together. So basically the signal gets swamped, which is why it has trouble connecting, but we'll see it working fine in a minute. So at this point, I still haven't moved them apart, but we do manage to get it working. So I'd plug in and we're gonna hit the plus button and it comes up again. So let's click the connect button. Oh, right, we do the devices button, but 
let's do connect and this time we'll go into the led strip editor and you can see this time it actually comes up with the effects it did actually have issues again so you can see i've moved it a little bit further apart now and you can see the power button is working and now if we change effects it is changing them on screen so you can basically choose what you want to use and in the pencil there are some edit options and there's not a lot of editing that you can do but you can change some things so here let's go into the edit for breathing effect you can see you can choose the color the speed the brightness uh, and you can choose some different options again for each different effect you'll get slightly different options up the top you can see unicast mode and broadcast mode and the difference between these two is unicast will just allow you to pick one effect but broadcast will allow you to choose multiple effects which change after a certain time period so you can see i've got halo and twinkle selected and now i've added guiding and each one will last for 10 seconds and then switch over to the next one you can see in the edit you can change the duration that the effect lasts for before switching to the next effect so here i choose flame and then again twinkle and in the twinkle you can set that down to five seconds so we'll have a flame effect that lasts 10 seconds then the twinkle effect that lasts five seconds then it will go back to the flame effect again so there's a, there are a few options with this led strip but it's not that you can say i want led 32 to do x it's it's a bit more limited than that but there should still be plenty to keep people happy with this system so now that the lighting side is working i'm going to try the fc setup again now i already know because obviously this is in hindsight it won't work on the flight controller i'm using inav 7.1 which actually isn't released yet so it's not supported by the speedy b app if it was running 7.0 it would have worked no problem but you can see i've, I've managed to set a password and uh, can connect to the speedy b that warning just gives me the, the information that it's not actually uh, the correct version is not supported and again it is a bit too close i did notice the bluetooth symbol dropping out on the main screen but it does connect and allow you to make changes so it's a really useful tool so there we go guys i hope you enjoyed this video and you found it useful this is going to be really weird because i have no idea what i said here but yeah the led strip works pretty nicely and having access to the speedy b app via this is really useful i mean the f405 wing never had speedy b connectivity and now just using this led strip you can so um yeah if you've got a flight controller on a small quad but doesn't have speedy b then go for this option because it will give you a lot more choice in how you set up the quad but anyway, I hope this video gave you enough information that you can make your own decision whether this is a suitable product for you or not. It's not my place to say, I just give you information that allow you to decide whether it's good for you or not. But anyway, thank you very much for watching guys. Fly models like you stole them. I'll try and remember to turn the microphone on next time. Have fun. Bye bye.